So I think our clinical or research question to be answered was, could we use urinary cell-free DNA in order to measure minimal residual disease in the bladder for patients who had non-muscle invasive bladder cancer? To answer that question, we designed a prospective study on patients with high-risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer undergoing standard of care repeat TURBT. In non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, we had uh, patients who came in with a diagnosis of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer beforehand. Standard of care in those patients, because of their risk category, size of tumor, grade of tumor, is to undergo another resection in the operating room, which is another general anesthesia, another uh, uh, risk of complications after surgery, catheter placement, complications, et cetera. So we collected urine on them beforehand, and then we took them for their standard of care procedure. We sent that tissue to pathology to determine if there's any residual disease in the bladder. If there was tumor present, that tumor also was sequenced with whole exome sequencing similar to the index tumor. And then for the urine, we ran a cell-free DNA analysis, which was a custom panel of up to 50 genes based on the original index TURBT tumor. So looking at the index and the repeat TURBT tumor, we found a high concordance between the two. On average, it's about 83% of similar genomic alterations between those two time points in the same patient. And in the urine, we found that we could detect tumor-specific alterations in 10 of the 11 patients, so it was highly sensitive. And depending on the definition which you use for UTDNA positivity, uh, extremely sensitive up to 100%, meaning that all patients who had residual disease on their repeat uh, TURBT were positive for the UTDNA of the tumor in the urine. There's multiple implications, not just not necessarily just for treatment of patients. That's certainly the goal, but I think to deviate from the current standard of care, we have a lot of work to do to establish UTDNA. Um, but looking forward, some of our aspirations, things we hope to do is to use it in clinical trials, to use urinary tumor DNA uh, as a surrogate for a biopsy to monitor disease on and off therapy. Um, we still have tremendous work to be done to validate this as a uh, surrogate for MRD. Uh, but in terms of patient care and um, standard of care, one day with the supporting data behind it, we could potentially be risk stratifying patients prior to a repeat TRBT to see which patients we could save from having to undergo another general anesthesia and invasive surgery. Specifically, we're looking at the urinary tumor DNA uh, across a longer period of time. So these patients that we have, this. The data that we've presented is a small fraction of the large ongoing prospective study. We're monitoring them throughout surveillance periods so that we can monitor if they have a UTDNA positive time event, what is the time to recurrence and will they recur shortly after that. So longer follow-up in these patients primarily with a larger cohort will continue to answer the Im immediate questions we have now. Secondarily, we hope to look at standard of care intravesical treatment options, which includes chemotherapy and BCG, and monitor the UTDNA on and off therapy. So, for example, if we have a patient who's getting BCG therapy, we have a baseline uh, urinary tumor DNA level. We can monitor it to see if it increases, decreases, or does not change to serve as a surrogate for their pathologic clinical response.